Welcome. Thank you guys for being on. Um, I should introduce myself, I guess. My name's Simon. Uh, it says Jeremy Wolf in the corner, but um, my name's Simon. I'm the director of player personnel at More Than Baseball. <laughs> um, basically, uh, this call is meant to basically talk about minor league finances. Uh, we know it's a grind. All of us kind of have some experience with it, but um, yeah, how do we manage our money? How can minor leaguers best make uh, money work for them? I'm a current player in the Rays organization, um, drafted in 2018. Uh, and Justin, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Yep, uh, name's Justin Friedman. I'm a current pitcher in the White Sox organization. I was drafted in 2019, so um, at my first spring training right now. But yeah, same thing. Obviously, I was a senior sign, so just looking for you know ways to kind of maximize what we do have and um, you know stretch a dollar out a little bit to be able to make minor league lifestyle a little more uh, practical and affordable and not have finances be the reason you get pushed out of the game. Awesome. Uh, Nick? Yeah, my name is Nick Barrow. I'm a financial advisor with Merrill Lynch. I played college ball with Justin. Um, I played at Division II school at Cal State San Bernardino. got a degree in finance there. Uh, started working at Merrill um, right after. Cool. And Ryan, you can't see Ryan, but he's on the call too. I am. Um, yeah, that's probably a good thing you can't see me. <laughs> um, so I was drafted 2013 uh, with the Rangers, played with them four and a half years. Um, just barreling through the minor leagues, baby, getting on buses, having half the team not speak your language. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. And then I started with Edward Jones right after that actually went to school to be a nurse anesthetist and then fell in love with personal finance while I was there. So that's my story so far. Awesome. Uh, thank you guys all for hopping on. This is going to be a really cool video for guys to sort of learn a lot about uh, basic finances and things like that. So I'll start off with a basic question. Um, how should a minor leaguer manage his finances, uh, try to balance expenses and attempt to have a stable life? Uh, what kind of planning does that involve? And what do you guys think about on a daily slash monthly basis regarding budget? Yeah, so um, I guess just to kick it off, one of the things that I will say is that uh, when you look at it, everybody's going to have a different level of financial literacy going in. Um, but one of the things that I will say is like when you talk about guys like Tony Robbins, these people that are big, you know, financial advisors, treating it as if it's a tax as far as like saving a chunk of your paycheck. Um, because like, like what he says, what a lot of guys say is if the taxes were to go up whatever percentage tomorrow, right, we would all complain and be pissed off and everything like that, but we would pay it. Like you just would because you have to. And so when you kind of take that mentality into like, it's a non-negotiable that I'm taking X percentage and putting that away towards investment or towards whatever, even if you're just putting it in your, savings, like just getting in that mindset of like, this is not something that I'm going to fluctuate on and just committing to that really early on was really big for me. And that percentage is going to be different for everybody based on your signing bonus, based on level of comfortability, but just doing a little bit of basic math and being like, okay, this is how much I spend on groceries, food, whatever. Right. And coming up with a percentage that you're comfortable with and being like, no matter what, that's, that's getting put aside towards, you know, growth or however you want to look at it. That would be like my basic starting off point is start there. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll jump in and, uh, I'll piggyback off that and just say that it all starts with like a plan and like, you got to think about what's essential because like you said, like you're making 11, $1,200 a month. So you gotta be real careful with like each dollar that you spend. So if you have a plan in your head, uh, writing things down really helps. Um, I know for a fact that, you know, like you have to think, okay, what do I absolutely need to spend my money on? Um, and like, what is something that, you know, maybe I can go without. And then at the same time, you also want to make sure that you're, you know, you are a professional athlete. So you want to get good nutrition um, and, things in that nature as well, because you want to be able to perform at the highest level. So it's, it's a really uh, interesting balance in my opinion. But even like the practical approach of that, right? So like, let's take coffee, which I think is a good example. Yeah. Um, you know, you can, there's so many ways to do that, but it's, it's all about like optimizing even the things that you maybe enjoy, but don't necessarily need. So if we're looking at a cup of coffee, it's like I could spend 
the $20 on a cheap French press and then DM coffee companies or DM grinds and get those sent to you. Like if you're just trying to get caffeine, you could DM a caffeine pill company, right? There's so many different ways that you could get what you need out of that without spending $6 on a cup of coffee every single day or two of them or whatever. So like boiling it down to, okay, this is what I want. I want caffeine or I want coffee. Right. And it's like, what's the most affordable way to do that? Yeah. Um, and then, so that, that's stuff where it's just like, it, it, we're not, you don't have to cut certain things out of your life that you maybe want, but it's just like optimize it to where it's saving you three bucks a day, you know, and then over the course of the month, whatever. Yeah. Ryan, uh, when you transitioned from being a ball player into being a financial advisor, what was the thing you wished you had learned when you were playing? Just how impactful compound interest is, most likely, and then how important the plan is. Uh -huh. Justin and Nick are saying the same thing. Like, if you, if you can put 10% away, put it away. That should be a no-doubter. Like, automatically contribute if you need to start if you need to open an account at whatever place it can i mean it can be robin hood just automatically contribute to that somehow and then start i mean i would say start investing just because the lessons you learn from investing are invaluable as well yeah let's that's a good transition Balance, fun, whatever yeah what is so if a guy i know a lot of guys that i've played with i'm sure the same is true for you justin but a lot of guys like to try out investing What's a safe way to try that out without risking? Because we don't have a lot of money to risk. Um, what's a good way to start doing that? I mean, I would say that there's inherent risk, right? Yeah. Um, what, what you can do is if there, there's two ways to go about things. I'm somebody that really likes to understand things myself, um, but you can't be an expert at everything. So, you know, and there's only so many hours in a day and that's kind of where Nick comes in. Like I have my own financial stuff that I do um, individually, but then when I don't have the time and the resources, I find somebody who knows a lot. Right. And so that's where it's like, you have to kind of balance out. Okay. I'm trying to learn about tech and analytics and all these other things. And there's only so many hours in the day. So in the off season, I try to learn as much as I can about the stock market and investing and all those things. And you should do your homework. But when you don't have time, it's like find somebody that you trust and be able to use those resources um, so that, you know, you can let your money work for you and have like, you know, passive growth and, and just the worst thing to do, which is piggybacking off what Ryan was saying is just wait or like keep delaying and procrastinating on that because of the compound interest. And it's just like the earlier you can get your foot in the door and understand that like the market's going to fluctuate and it's, you just take the emotions out of that process and just say, okay, either I need to know what I need to know and go learn it, or I need to find somebody that already knows it that I trust and let them handle that part while I handle baseball. Yeah. And that it's going to be different for everybody. I kind of do a little bit of both with Nick. Um, but some guys don't want to do anything with that. Right. And, and if you don't want to spend the mental energy trying to learn that stuff, that's fine too. But it doesn't mean don't do it. It still means like go find somebody and just be like, I don't have time to deal with this. I don't want to deal with this, but I know that I need to be doing it. Absolutely. I'm totally behind that. Like if you, but the trust is number one. If you're going to find an advisor, you have to trust them have to know what you're spending like some guys won't they'll just be like oh yeah i want i want this guy i like this guy like you need to know how much it's going to cost in the long run so it's not just it's not just about especially with making 1200 dollars a month like every dollar that you have is a large percentage i'm sorry my daughter is in the back it's like that is right <laughs> <over here. laughs> but every dollar as a percentage of your income is large so like that's why it matters about, okay, so am I in low cost ETFs? Because, and then you have to go back to data. Okay. Why, why would I choose this investment versus another? How much am I paying my guy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And your advisor should be able to tell you that straight up. Yeah. And so and I want to, I, I just, it's invaluable. I want to jump in here and say that uh, with more than baseball, uh, just another pub, the, the Nick and Ryan are both on board helping out guys with more than baseball. So um, for those watching this video, for those um, interested in getting into finance, um, send me a message. Uh, you can send us a message on Instagram or on Twitter. Uh, we'll connect you with Nick or Ryan. And you can sort of ask your personal questions um, as you please. I mean, we just, we want to make sure it's accessible to everybody. Um, so there's that little pub. But uh, Nick, did you have anything to jump off that with? 
No, absolutely. Ryan hit the nail on the head and Justin mentioned it too, just about the compound interest and about the experience and like, you know, just waiting and delaying and like there is inherent risk. Like you're, there is risk. Like there's no, you can't say there's not. It just, it is what it is. And also the trust side of it and understanding. But if you, I think if people like can get a general basic understanding of, you know, like the markets and kind of what Justin's doing is, really like been trying to learn and, and, and stuff and, and read a lot and, and whatnot. You don't have to be an expert at all because you guys are, you know, playing baseball and you want to be professional baseball players first and foremost. And there's tons of demands that come with that. But, you know, finding someone that you can trust, having a general understanding of, um, you know, what you're going to be investing in and then the transparency, the communication between, you know, your advisor and yourself. Uh, I think that is going to make it for – you to learn more it's going to, it's going to be a better relationship and um and yeah it's what you guys were, were basically saying um what i was thinking so yeah and i mean like to that to that point with with me and nick like the conversations will be like you know maybe something happened with work or something where like my money like i had a little bit better month as far as earning and that's like okay like we can do some stuff that maybe would be a little more aggressive and like you i you know i'm able to dictate it based off of what's coming in and he's able to see all of that as well so you know i do have my like long-term stuff that i'm just you know kind of letting sit and doing and kind of everything like that but there are times where if you know maybe it was like a little better month, month that i can be like okay i want to actually do something that yes is going to have a little bit more risk um but i'm okay with that and that's coming you know from me and then we can sit there and talk about it so then it's, it's not just like it's not one dimensional in that sense mm -hmm. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about a little bit, um, and you kind of mentioned like the month to month ideal. Um, I've used mint in the past for budgeting. That's sort of what I use on a month to month basis. Um, that's worked really well for me. They actually talked about it at a meeting for players in instructs in 2018. And I'd never used it before, but I tried it out and it was really helpful for sort of knowing what I spend on what per month. Um, do you guys have any tips on budgeting, things like that, things that have worked for you in the past? Um, yeah, so my biggest one is I look at my my expenses and then I try to get free products or sponsorships off of that. Um, and I use that to kind of mitigate some of that cost. But um, yeah, definitely keeping track of everything. And I don't use any app or anything like that. I just go through my statements and I look at stuff and I, you know, I just do kind of basic math that way. But um, like I said, I'll try to find like, okay, these are the products that I like and that I use most frequently. And then literally just reach out to those companies and, you know, say, Hey, this is something that's like a big part of my day um, or a big part of my like process, you know, throughout the month and everything like that. And like, I'd love to, um, you know, have a, like discuss a potential business arrangement and the response from those has been a lot easier than you think, you know, I don't have an agent or anything like that. So it's literally just me reaching out to people. And I, nine times out of 10, I would say that I hear back mm -hmm. and at the very least, like, you know, if it's a discount, whatever it is, like you're, you're cutting costs because those are just things that you use. And um, so I would say that that's something that's very underutilized right now by athletes. I think some of that maybe comes from the NCAA and like <laughs> how we kind of feel about doing all that. So uh, obviously it's something that we were like very, that was coached out of us and, and definitely never taught to us in that environment. Um, but that's something that I think is, is super easy. And then, yeah, just like, it, I think an app is probably better than the way I do it, to be honest, for most people, just to be able to have somebody that tracks it for you instead of having to like write everything down and calculate stuff. And so I think that's probably a little more uh, user friendly and, and time friendly. Um, but you need, you need to know on a very basic level what I'm spending versus what I'm making. If you don't and you're just guessing, then it's just, yeah, like you're, you're not going to, have sustainable growth on anything that way. Like you're just, you're going to have good months and bad months and it's going to be very fluctuating like that. Definitely agree with that. So I use personal capital, if you know what that is. It's just a way you can track all your expenses. It tracks your net worth and you can see how, you know, compounding impacts you, especially over a long period of time, how impactful that is. But Justin, oh my goodness, I'm so glad that you said that. <laughs> On whenever you can get a deal, especially in today's social media world, 
they, oh my goodness, they will love to give you products. Like I remember protein supplements, anything like that. If you can get your name out there and say, hey, I play professional baseball for X, Y, Z, they will be like, oh, how much do you want? Here, this is $1 here. <laughs> I'll give you everything we have. I think a lot of people have it also in their head, like, you know, I'm not in a major league. So like I'm a minor league. They're like, they only do deals with those guys. And it's like, to be honest, a lot of people outside of baseball, they, they see professional baseball player and that, you know, that's an opportunity for them in their business. They're not looking at it like, oh, he's only in like single. Like, that's just not the vast, the vast majority of companies don't, especially if it's outside of the baseball world, like that's not an issue that you're going to run into. So it's like, and again, the worst that happens is, is they don't answer or they say, oh, we're not doing that. Like, it, it, it's not something that is a painful process. It's really easy to do. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend doing it with stuff that you don't. Oh, looks like we lost Justin there. Uh, yeah. Nick, Nick, you got anything on that? No, yeah, definitely. I was actually going to, um, it's one of the things I just talked, I talked to Justin before we hopped on this call um, a little bit and, you know, it all goes back to the plan that, we kind of talked about it a little bit earlier. Um, and also him reaching out to all these companies and having a pretty good success rate of getting some free stuff, free clothes, whatever it is. Um, that also, you know, moves into like what I'm looking at the, the email he sent, what should put us in the off season and kind of becoming like, you can become a brand ambassador for them or something like that. Um, and he has done like from off season in about October to now, like just figuring out ways that he can make some money, make some extra cash on the side so he can be able to, you know, save more and go into next season a little bit ahead. And then he can, you know, like he's not struggling like with the, the $1,200, like sweating it out because, you know, you, you already have enough stress when you're playing ball and, and whatnot. And, um absolutely like physically and mentally in that aspect so he i mean i wish he was <laughs> he uh isn't on yeah. there but he well, he definitely hopefully he comes back he could definitely take you through like he would call me at least half a dozen times in the past three months um with different ideas one being more than baseball one being he does these uh graphics he likes to like do art and design stuff and he does his little art things he made an instagram page with that um, because, you know, when you guys are on the bus for 10, 12, 14 hours, you know, you can't really do much, but he like you can, you can draw on your, um, on your laptop or on your computer or something. And that's something he really enjoys and people actually really liked it. And he, you know, like make a little bit of side income there, um, doing that because you know, it's something that's better than just sitting there watching a movie or listening to music or, or whatnot. So it keeps them busy and it helps them um you know like get a little bit extra income on the side yeah um, ryan uh i want to talk to you a little bit about the off season um me personally i've had off season jobs the last two off seasons it's a good time to sort of save money um in your experience as a player and then kind of in your financial career after that um what are some like tips and tricks that you throw out for the off season it's a tough time for a lot of guys yeah uh so in, in the off season I would always get a job, but you, and then the other thing, key is everyone has to go to the gym or work out somewhere. So if you can find a buddy or email gym owners in the area or people who have like indoor fields, if you're a pitcher, you need some more to throw, they would love to have you. And then it's an automatic end to say, Hey, I'd love to give lessons at a discount or something. So then you've got a job, you've got a free place to work out and you've got an income. It's like, that's, that's what was key for me in the off season. I think a lot of guys, and I've heard a lot of guys do that too. Now, as you increase, you know, as guys go move up the ladder, they're double A, triple A, it's, it's probably prudent to continue to just hone your skills and see if you, like if you need to travel out to Seattle or something, go to driveline and get like analytics on your pitching, things like that. I know, I think it's way more involved now in the minors than it was when I was playing, but doing things like that, can have a dramatic impact on like your career, which yeah. in turn kind of just makes everything else go that much faster. I think it's, it's a good way to think about it as, as like an investment. Like you kind of look into the future value of your career. Like if you get two extra miles an hour on your fastball, or if you, you know, hit 
eight more home runs next season, like something like that, it's worth investing X amount of money in it because down the road, it's going to make you 10 times that. So um, yeah, I've always kind of looked at the off season as like, you know, if you do spend money on something, make sure it's something that's going to, you know, push your career a little farther. Um, to- totally agree. But then also you got to live too. So like you did bust your butt the entire year and it is important to get a little bit of, I mean, just get off the diamond and enjoy. You you play baseball for a career. Like you get paid to play baseball. It's pretty cool. It, it's hard to remember that, you know? Yeah, definitely. Welcome back, Justin. Do you guys able to hear me? I don't know. My hotel Wi-Fi is... No, you're good. We can hear you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, in terms of your offseason, Justin, um, you want to give us a breakdown of what kind of went into your thoughts going into this offseason? Yeah, this one actually was – I learned a lot about this one. Um, also, just kind of the back end of what I heard with you guys, I'll talk about uh, kind of the burnout aspect of that, which is like – like you said, you spend your entire year around the game. And so uh, I personally, I really like baseball and I spend an ungodly amount of hours watching film and learning about tech and all those things. And coaching for me, uh, I like it a lot and I'll probably do it at some point in my life. But it was very draining to, you know, work camps for like six hours and then go back and then try to read like about analytics. And so I, and even talking with Nick, I was just like, that's not really something that I want to do in the off season. It's kind of the easy way to make a buck because it's where your connections are, your resources are, and you know, it's what, you know, it's kind of like your skill set. But uh, for me, I, I really don't think that that's the best thing for my off season because um, I want to come into the season kind of feeling refreshed. Um, and that doesn't quite do that for me. Um, the things that I did enjoy were more like, speaking engagements whether it's a seminar whatever it is or um you know digital art which i was mentioning before my wi-fi crash um but you know just taking something that is kind of like outside of what i do for you know 12 hours a day for most of my life and finding something new and different in that case it was like drawing and then people being interested in buying them um those things to me i think have help you have a healthier relationship with the game which is also something that's important because it's like if you feel like you're just, you know, like working like four jobs just to stack up some money so that you are in a better position going into the season, like you also don't want to go into the season burnt out, exhausted. And like, Mm -hmm. you know, like Ryan was saying, you have to live. So um, that balance I think is always going to be on an individual basis, but it's definitely something to be aware of. And um, I think a lot of guys do need, not a break from the baseball itself, but like you don't need eight hour days of, of camps of baseball and all that, you know, like that's just kind of, um, I don't think that that necessarily puts you in the best mindset and position going into a season. So my goal kind of next off season is to like, like I have guys that I, I train and work with remotely and things like that. But I think um, those kind of like long hours outside on your feet, like that kind of stuff, I don't, I don't plan on having to be a part of my next offseason. Um, Nick, I'd like to ask you, so a lot of guys in baseball and otherwise, you know, you have these sort of big life expenses that come up at certain times, be it, you know, if you want to get married, if you want to get a wedding ring, like you got to mm-hmm. buy a car, your car breaks down that you had from high school or college or whatever. Like, How do you plan for something like that? Yeah, well, so the first thing is just having a plan in general, because obviously like, there's unexpected occurrences and expenses that happen all the time um and so like that's not even that's not even just going away from just baseball and athletes that's something just for every everyone like in their finance um their personal finances like having that plan having that um i like to have tell people it you know depends how much money they're making and stuff but have you know a thousand or two thousand or five hundred whatever it is um set aside for just an emergency fund that you you know, when push comes to shove, that money's there. You can use it for, you know, one of those instances that um, you just mentioned. But, I mean, it's also it, – it really just depends um, on, on what, like, like what, your, what your situation is, too. But I, I think definitely 
what I like to convey to people and uh, that I always talk to is just the, the plan and the first, like first and foremost, like planning, saving, um, like we've been talking about putting 10, 20, 30%, whatever um, amount, some sort of amount away f uh, from, you know, your paycheck um, to plan for your future. Yeah. And I also have something that like, I, I don't want to have tied up, right? Like I don't, you know, I don't think that like your emergency fund should be, now you have to sell a bunch of stocks, wait for that to go through, wait for that to transfer to your bank, right? Like if, if it's actually an emergency fund, that means that you're probably going to need it in a pinch quickly. So um, that's a separate thing where it's not, it's not tied up in a bunch of stuff. Um, and that's something too, where like I try to use, um, you know, I'm not there right now, honestly, currently, but a, a good position where I feel really like secure because you never know with life and with guys like us, you can get released in a heartbeat, you know, like there's a million things that could happen. So, um, two months rent, like kind of walked away would be that you have access to, you know, whenever you need it. I think that will give you a great sense of security that can be hard to achieve in our, our level of finances and everything like that. So even an extra months, it's like push comes to shove. Yeah. You get released or whatever it is two days before rents due, or, you know, just anything like that, where it's just like you overspent in a month and then now you're releasing rents due in a few days and you have nothing like mm -hmm. making sure that you at least have one month covered, you know, at least that gives me kind of a little more peace of mind and uh, you know, that you'll kind of be all right. But I mean, even that situation is crazy. When you think about us going to get, when we have to go get an apartment, you know, you're going to need like a guarantor because it's like when they look at your annual income, they go, you can't sign a lease by yourself. You know, you just put a parent on there. Like, I think people need to understand that <laughs> first and foremost of like a minor league baseball player can't even go get themselves an apartment. Yeah. Ryan, that's Preach. a good point for you to jump in. Uh, what do you got on like guy has to pay first month, last month or something like that. Like what's a comfortable way to put yourself in that situation without, uh, without kind of being crushed by expenses. I was going to say, so I don't know what the, uh, like what the audience is. I know it's current players, but if you're, thinking about or you're looking at being drafted and you're in college, that's also a great time to just get a little part-time job and like just save up something. So you have something available for when you do get drafted. Cause I know a lot of guys don't want to touch their, like their signing bonus, but sometimes you have to. And that would be another instance where, okay, I've got three months living expenses set aside. The I got, you know, whatever. If you sign for a hundred thousand, you have 20,000 in balance funds. And then the rest is just, I, I'm totally waiting on retirement. It's, it's locked away in equities, whatever. And that depends on your risk tolerance. Nick, you, you know, <laughs> we, we never offer like straight investment advice just without going through, okay, how do you, how do you feel about risk? Blah, 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 blah. But yeah, I would say it's just, you have to prepare. I mean, it, it goes back to number one, get a budget, know what you're spending. I know it sounds so e it sounds so easy, but it's like that actually doing that and having the discipline to put away money, even though you need it, is so hard, especially yeah. when you're making almost nothing. Yeah, the quote I always refer back to with all this stuff is it's not easy, but it's simple. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's not an easy concept to understand. It's not easy to actually put into practice, but it's a simple concept. Get in early, <laughs> invest <laughs> often. Like it, the concept could not be more simple. And that's, and that's honestly, that's the same thing with playing us with a lot of these things. Like, and it's yeah. a baseball lesson. How many times? How, how many times has your coach been like, "Just throw a low and away fastball"? It's yeah, not that hard. Just throw strikes. Right. <laughs> <You're laughs> like, All right. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that. I wrote that down. I had to. <laughs> I like, no, absolutely. That is so like investing. You're like, oh, it's just that easy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so there's gonna be a we we sort of all saw the news. There's gonna be a pay raise in 2021. Um, let's talk through like what kind of what that changes for minor league guys. I mean, for me, you know, high A, double A, like it's a 50%, almost a 50% pay raise. Like how should I go about planning my, you know, adjusting my budget or changing things like that for that pay raise in 2021? Hopefully I'm still with an organization, but yeah. I mean, it's not, you're still below the poverty line. So as far as adjusting it, like it's still, you still need to understand the situation that you're in. <laughs> And I think it's, it's a good start. It's, it's good because people are having this conversation and a lot of people don't even know about these things. But one of the things to remember too is organization to organization is vastly different. So there's organizations that house players, that have dorms, 
you know, there's organizations whose per diem is way more. There's organizations that um, are covering rent right now, which is completely different. Your host family situations are completely different. The other thing we should um, talk about, I think, here is clubhouse dues. Um, at different yeah. levels, obviously, your dues are anywhere from four to sixteen dollars a day. Um, so that's another mm -hmm. thing that you know, people don't really think about, but wanted to throw out there. Yeah, there's a lot of things that, you know, depending on how your organization does things, like I can really only speak for mine and for guys that I know from other ones, but um, the, I don't want to give somebody advice when their situation could be completely different as far as those things. Um, so my blanket advice is you're still below the poverty line and it still needs to be the same approach. Like if you start thinking, oh, I got money now, and then you look and you're still making, I mean, basically it'd be, I think it's close to equivalent to minimum wage. Um, but it's, it's still beneath it. And it's like, so, you know, like Ryan was saying, I, I honestly, I wish that I had done a lot of these things in college and like, not necessarily had a job, but like sources of passive income, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and like, again, taking hobbies, like a lot of these guys play video games, like after spring training, you play video games for six hours. It's like, why not start a stream, you know, and see, uh, even if it's a couple, even if it's like 10 bucks that you get like a week from that or whatever it is, like, you know, just little things like that, the stuff that you're already doing. Um, I don't think that, I think if you, it, it would be very dangerous to act like this change changes everything for you. Yep. I think as a, as a player, I think it's a, I'm, I'm happy that it's happening. Um, it could also is going to come at the cost of, you know, guys being released on the back end and downsizing as with any like company that does those types of things. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think you can really change your approach all that much. Yeah, I'll just literally add on to that and say that when people start making like, not just obviously baseball, but you start making more money and you think, oh, I can go do this. I can go buy these more expensive clothes. I can go buy this car. I can go to this restaurant. I can go do all these, like, just, I can go do all these things. I can go spend all this money because now I'm making this much more money. And then you're still in the same situation that you were before because you're like spending money on stuff that is more or less useless at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, same, um, same amount of money, just different stuff. Yeah, yeah. So you want to, like, you know, even if your income goes up significantly, you want to try to stay living at the same, um, like, the same way that you are. And then you can save more, and then you can plan more. And then, you know, life does happen, like we mentioned earlier. So, mm -hmm. uh, and you'll be prepared for that. Yeah. Yeah. That goes back to the tracking. Like if you have a, if you have some way to track your savings amount, like you're saying, I'm saving 20% of my income. It doesn't matter how much, you, how much more you make, like you're still going to stick, stick to that percentage. And that's why that's, I don't know. I think it's a flawless way to save money. If you're yeah, just, if you do this is my way, percentage. Money. Sorry about this. No, no, no. I was, I, I mean, it's this most simple way to just track. And it doesn't matter if you make more money, if you make less money, you're like, this is what I'm saving. And then based on that, you can typically track like when can you, when you'll actually become financially independent or I mean, when you want to stop working, all that kind of stuff. It just, right. savings rate is so easy to track. It's like, I put this much away, easy. So like if you hold that constant and like Nick's saying, you don't go spend now at a different level so that you're just poor with a nicer shirt, right? Um, if you hold that constant <laughs> yes. and you start making more money, then what you'll actually track is that like now you have more, right? But if you go, mm -hmm. go out and spend those things or, you know, maybe it can be very at the minor league level, it literally could just be getting a $25 steak when you shouldn't be, <laughs> you know, like, cause that's the level of money that we're talking about. But, um, a hundred percent and that, and unfortunately our environment as well has that, you know, competitive hyper masculine deal where guys are who's got the bigger chain and who's got the nice ego. Wallet, yeah. You know, and get wrapped up in all that. And so that's the other piece of like, but you gotta get that to truck apart. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's an element to like looking the part, you know, that um, I think people get caught up in for sure, but it's, I think it's also the good, the upside of that is that you have people that are literally, it's the only environment, it's the only working environment where you can have somebody who's worth multi-million dollars, like multiple, like 700000 to $7 million next to a guy that's worth 2000 yeah. In no other business setting are those guys in the same room, let alone like eating together, showering together, training together. Like, 
you have literally a millionaire next to a guy that has like not a dollar to his name. Yeah, so, negative. Right. So, that's, so you just don't have that atmosphere, and I think people don't realize like you get a very you get a dose of that that's very apparent every day. You're like, oh, I'm nowhere near like that's can't even fathom that. You know? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. well, I want to sort of bring this conversation to a close. This has been awesome. I want to just finish off talking about uh, you know retirement post playing career, and I'm going to start with you, Ryan, because. You played for four and a half years and then you transitioned out of baseball. What was that like? And can you talk through a little bit about like what you learned from that experience? Yeah, it was, so I, I had a wife, the, or I've had a wife, excuse me. <laughs> I got married <laughs> uh, trouble, right, right when, right when I got dressed. I know <laughs> I got, I got married right when I got drafted. So my wife was with me the entire time going through the minor leagues and we were like, so I was just going to play with the Rangers until they didn't give me an option anymore. So then they didn't give me an option anymore. <laughs> and then we were both, we both said, Hey, I'm, we're going to go back. I live in Indiana. So we're, we're going to go back to Indiana. We're going to have a, a family. So that was, that was an easy decision for me. I've had her backing and her support this entire time. And I was like, I mean, I'm glad to go serve her now. So it was, that was a little easier for me. I already loved finance. And then, seeing guys like totally waste all their money, just put another passion into me. And I was like, I got to do this as a job. <laughs> like, our, like Nick and I's job is literally to help people make good and wise, prudent decisions. And then you just have a relationship with somebody. It's so fun, dude. <laughs> like, come on. Um, and so what, was, <clears throat> but, what was the transition process like financially? I mean, I'm sure there were a lot of bumps in the road and I don't want to get too, pri too private or something like that, but if there's something that you want to kind of a story you want to tell about that, that'd be great. Oh my gosh. First of all, open book. You can ask me whatever you want. So I, I signed for a hundred thousand and we just never spent that and it just take, and we just took that and that let us, that gave us a little bit more options. So when we left, I, we could get a down payment for a house and then I could spend time like evaluating, okay, this is where I want my career to go. Who do I want to be with? You can interview with different companies, but that's, it all goes back to planning. Like if you just have a plan and then you execute, what, what is, we had a coach that would say, uh, he'd be like, every day you come in, plan your work, work your plan. Just do that. Yeah. And if we, it, it's the same thing when you retire, you just, or I guess I got released. I don't want to say retired. Don't let me lie to you. <laughs> um, but what, when I got released, same thing. You just, okay, here's what I want to do. Here's how we need to execute. You know, I've got this incredible wife. How, how, where do we go from here? And then it's just evaluating your decisions. Where do I want to go? Is this going to work out? I know it, sound, it sounds sim more simple than it was, but I mean, that's, that's how it worked. Yeah, and I'm here. And it, it goes back to Justin mentioning the rainy day fund or the, the sort of emergency fund. Like, if you have something that you can fall back on, and in your case, it was a little bit more than just an emergency fund, but like even that little bit gives you the option of like, you can land on your feet. You aren't just like scrabbling to find whatever job you can pick up. Like you can have some choices in that front. Yeah, and your lifestyle at that point is so low. Like you guys have, we all learned to live on maybe a thousand dollars a month. Yeah. Like you have to be, like keep that going after baseball. And then you'll be set up for the rest of your life. I mean, not that it's always about just, okay, I'm just going to retire and do nothing. It's just, it gives you options to be able to do what you want with your time faster than everybody else. And if you live at that lifestyle, oh my goodness, if you live at that lifestyle and you have a regular job and you start, and everyone has the work ethic. If you're in baseball, well, most guys, <laughs> let me go back. <laughs> most guys have great work ethics. Um, that are in baseball and they've, they've grinded it out. They know what it's like to be a failure in front of thousands of people. If you have that and, and you can just work hard and get a corporate job and then you live at that level still, oh my goodness. Like you'll be, it's, it's just crazy. Yeah, yeah, like word, your no, future's so bright, it hurts my eyes. <laughs> you know, when, when you've had people telling you how much, you know, booing you and telling you how off you are and telling you how you're never making all stuff, the idea of like asking or trying something and not being good at it or saying no is like, like anything off the field yeah. that you want to try and like it ends up, you, you start out pretty bad at it nine times out of 10 and then you just get better. But that process is so much easier to handle. And it's just, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, wait, you're going to tell me no? Okay. Like, 
It's better than what I've heard for the last <laughs> yeah. decades. So. Yeah, definitely. No, I, uh, it's one thing that I think that people can really like, you can use and you can leverage as you guys both just talked about it is you're working your butt off and literally for what, 12 hours a day, baseball, you're, you're failing, like whatever the deal is, like you're not going to make a perfect pitch every time you're, like there, you just go through so much mental like exhaustion and fit and physical exhaustion as well. And it's something like, it's like, it's a crazy job. Like it's kind of like, I could kind of compare it to like being like an investment banker working 80 hours a week. That's kind of the same thing. If not like a little different, obviously uh, more physical, but if you can leverage that and like, I want to talk about like an interview and stuff. Cause you know, some people they got drafted out of high school or they went to college for three years you know, you're playing college baseball. For me personally, like I didn't, I didn't really work. I played college ball. I played summer ball every year. And then I graduated and I was like, all right, now what? Let's go get a job. Let's go uh, go to an interview and whatnot. And the way I think that you can really leverage like your experiences and what you learn, because like I think baseball and life and baseball and business go really like hand in hand. And I think that like, if you can really tell people, like you can look at yourself in the mirror and you can also, you know, go to the interview process and show that you are mentally resilient you're tougher than probably 90 percent of the people that are also trying to get these jobs and stuff maybe hey you're a little less qualified in the like technical aspect of it and stuff but you're gonna like get your nose dirty and you're gonna like figure out a way like if you don't know something you're gonna figure it out and I think that's something that most people playing like you know this baseball in general if you play college you guys are playing professionally can relate to and can you know um leverage and use and just transition that work ethic to you know the the corporate side the working side yeah i'm gonna do another pub here for uh, more than baseball service but we provide uh professional development and job coaching for any ball player um we have a professional development guy who literally all he wants to do is help ball players get good jobs after they play and actually get internships and things like that in the off season. So um, it's a, again, have a plan. Um, that's what he always says too. It's the same thing that we're talking about with financial advising. Like make sure you kind of know what you like, what you're interested in and, and you can crush a job interview as a ball player. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm going to give you guys a last chance to sort of reiterate some of the points you were making, but uh this has been an awesome conversation. And I, I mean, I certainly learned a lot. Um, and I hope, you know, anybody watches this does too. Um, I guess I'll just say thank you for having me on and having the opportunity to, you know, connect with you guys and everything and, and share kind of this aspect of it. Um, I do think that one important thing is information changes situations and money is something that's not very comfortable to talk about, especially like I said, in that environment where you have a guy that's made $7 million and you got to sign for 2000. It's, it's an uncomfortable topic, um, but it's something that we just need to be versed in because it just changes so many outcomes, whether you're forced out of the game because of it, whether you're, you know, basically in a horrible situation when your career does end because of it, or whether you've kind of built it up so that when the seasons in your life change during a new chapter, like that transition is a little easier or being able to enjoy your life a little bit more through, a, you know, a time that it's really hard to do that in. Um, I just, I, whether it's, at a large scale like this where it's open and it's, you know, an open forum or just having somebody that you can have those conversations with, like, it's just, it's something that the dialogue needs to happen. Um, and to just be somewhat educated on it at the very least, because it, it'll make or break, not just your career, but I mean, everything after that as well. And you see a lot of guys, this is kind of the thing that puts them on the downward spiral or doesn't. And uh, so I'm really grateful that we got to kind of share our, perspectives on it yeah yeah i would say simon just thanks number one for your heart to help guys like more than baseball i, I wish that was around when i was playing <laughs> it's such an incredible thing that you're doing um and then thanks for you know choosing me to be an option here just to share a little bit of whatever i Again, and if anybody's listening, like, just shoot us an email if you want to talk. It's totally free, like, and we don't bite. We're just here to help. Uh, all piece of advice would be, number one, set a budget, get a plan, and then be a, a disciplined guy. Like, even if it's not about money, like, just be a man of character, a man of discipline, because that will take you so much farther than money, 
than your career in baseball, like that, that has implications for the rest of your life. And I, I would say really focus on that. Who are you get, who are you becoming as a man, not just a ball player, not just a wealth accumulator. Like those things are, are passing and who, who you are as a, as a man that, that stays with you forever, that reputation. Mm-hmm. Sorry to go deep on you there. I love it. <laughs> Oh, good. No, absolutely. I was just going to say that, you know, at the end of the day that you want to do something when you transition from the baseball career to the working world, you want to do something that you enjoy and that you love because maybe, you know, you're going to see a bunch of money and stuff, but at the end of the day, like you really want to be uh, happy with your life and have a good quality of life and stuff. Um, And if you hate your job, like you're not, even if you're making six figures, seven, whatever the the case is, if you hate it, like you're, it's going to drag you down mentally and physically and and stuff. So I just want to say that you should really do something that you like to do, that you love, that you're passionate about. So, but thank you, Simon, also in Morning Baseball for letting me uh, come on and and talk with you guys a little bit. Yeah, no, I really appreciate all you guys. And, you know, financial planning is one of those things that like, it allows you to kind of do what you want with the rest of your life. And so uh, I'm glad we got to have this conversation and, um, you know, hopefully a couple of ball players uh, make it one more wise decision because of this, but um, appreciate you guys on and uh, we will uh, get this posted as soon as possible. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely.